All right, so when it comes to the concept of income taxes, which is governed by the International Accounting Standard 12, this is a, this is a very important um, standard. This is a very important topic because whatever you do uh, is going to have tax consequences all right it's gonna have income tax or deferred tax or any other tax uh, consequences all right and so it's going to be a perverse um, concept or topic that applies to every other uh, uh, standard that we're going to deal with in our studies all right so it makes it imperative that you have to work very hard to make sure you understand this most especially if you doing the year module because then you're going to be doing tests you know uh, continuous assessment and um, because it's continuous assessment with a lead to marks they will find a way of intertwining the topics together so there's a good chance that um, you find this mixed up with other other learning learning topics All right so what are we going to do now we're going to start by looking at the required and discuss a little bit what that required requires before we go into the actual question All right which is always what you should do when dealing with your when dealing with your examination right you start by reading the required before you 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 read the details you need to know uh because if you start with your required that will guide you to know what to look for all right information that you need to look for and underline as you go through the the the, the details so the first question requires us here to calculate the correct profit before tax now the calculation of correct before tax is a standard question that you will almost always get in a, especially if you're doing the year module you know the semester module you should expect to get such questions in your assignment as in your, ass in your assignment one uh, right it's there where they require you to ca calculate the correct profit before tax so when calculating correct profit before tax you're going to take into account the uh, accounting standards so it might be an issue of errors right so there might be errors there might be omissions Basically, what that means is that the profit that was calculated according to accounting standards is wrong somewhere, right? So you need to adjust the accounting profit using accounting standards. And when you hear, um, when you at this point, you haven't started as yet applying the taxation rules, the rules of taxation. Many students, a lot of students, and I don't understand why every year, they want to adjust for exempt differences here. But exempt differences is when you're already applying the income tax rules, right? You are already, uh, you are already determining uh, taxable income. In this case, correct profit before tax means something is not right with our figures. Like it's actually wrong, all right? The, the amount is not correct. You have to uh, correct that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go through the reading and uh, see all those areas where there is a need for adjustment, right? Then the second question says that we need to calculate deferred tax balance. And remember, we use the statement of financial position. So when calculating deferred tax balances, remember that all we need is that to identify the assets that will be displayed in the, that will be disclosed in the, or presented in the statement of financial position. Then we determine their carrying amounts. Then we determine their tax base according to the rules given. Then we determine the temporary difference and their deferred tax implications. And I just want to remind you that uh, this is a calculation, right? This uh, is a calculation. This table is a calculation. Because many students then go on and confuse that for the deferred tax not. But that's just a calculation where they say calculate. All right. Uh, 
Then uh, we need also to calculate the deferred tax for the previous year because there's been some adjustments for the previous year that we need to take into account. Then we need to explain how to determine whether a movement in temporary differences from one year to, other, to the other is taxable or deductible. What makes us say this is, a, this is a taxable temporary difference? This is a deductible movement in temporary differences. How do we determine that? All right, so we're going to explain uh, some of the rules to you. And I want to believe that um, at this stage, you all have gone through the material, right? You, I do not expect any of you to be coming across the session for the first time. I believe you've all studied the topic. You just need um, the polishing up here and there. Then uh, we need to calculate the current tax. So the current tax is what we pay to SARS. We need to determine how much to pay to SARS. But this question says the current tax due, which means that we need to take into account um, those payments that we have already made, right? And now we need to know what's outstanding that needs to be paid, which will be a current liability. Uh, then we need also to disclose the income tax expense, not as well as the tax rate reconciliation. Right, so basically we will be focusing on the principles more than not. And um, then we'll try to demonstrate those principles based on uh, the information that is given to us. But the primary focus will be on the principles themselves. Right, uh, so... All right, um, so let's get started. So we have a question that gives us information about 2020. Our year end is 20 February for this current year. Um, all right. Then we have uh, 2020 year and then we have 2021 year. So we pay attention to the debits and the credits. So we have profit before tax. All right. Um, then now uh, we have um, this machine or given its cost right on the various dates and the accumulated depreciation on the dates as well then we're given the deferred tax liability the infantry and the um, income received in advance and the prepaid render so what we're going to do is that we're going to discuss um as we read we're going to discuss the effects on the questions that we're going to answer and then eventually we will go to the actual answers which i have here then we just uh, uh, show you how that is presented. But the discussion of the concept will be based on the um, paragraphs as we go. Right, so we have profit before tax and we have to go to one, one. So this is what they're saying for the current year. They're saying this figure is not correct. There's some adjustments that needs to be done. All right. And we are told that it's a... So we have been told that this um, profit before tax includes foreign income. And as you know, foreign income is going to be exempt, right? Because we are told here it's not taxable in South Africa. So it's going to be exempt. So when we calculate the current tax, right, we're going to exclude the foreign income of 531,000 because it's exempt. And everything that is exempt is also going to be a reconciling item, all right? So everything that is exempt is also going to be a reconciling item. So we will adjust uh, uh, this for when calculating taxable income in the current tax, then we will also need to disclose it in the income tax expense under the um, tax rate reconciliation, all right? The dividends as well, remember dividends, local dividends are not subject to income tax. So they are also exempt. And as such, they are going to be a reconciling item. Because they are exempt, we, when we need to calculate taxable income, in other words, when we convert this profit before tax to taxable income, all right, for the purposes of tax, right, then we're going to remove this these are dividends and traffic fines are also not deductible right? because 
they are not in the production of income. So they are not deductible as this route, they are exempt and they also form a reconciling item. That's why I expect at this level that this all makes sense because if it doesn't make sense at this stage, then uh, you must uh, have it, uh, a disturbance, a big disturbance, right? Because this should not be new concepts entirely. Then we are being told here that foreign tax is paid on be on on uh, on this income is one thirty two seven fifty. So this is the amount that you need when you're dealing with your. Firstly, when you're dealing with your income tax disclosure, the note, the income tax note, as well, of course, the accompanying tax rate reconciliation. Remember that the tax rate reconciliation is part of the income tax note. So if they say disclose the income tax note, they always say including the tax rate reconciliation. right? But they need not say that because the income tax note always includes the tax rate reconciliation. So if they don't want you to include the rate reconciliation, they will have to mention because when they say disclose the income tax note, then it's automatically it includes the tax rate reconciliation. Then they have to say excluding that, but not really including that. But they do so that for the purpose of clarity, students don't get confused, right? Right. Um, so we are told here that there's a new retailer. Uh, so this new retailer made payments in advance for their first delivery of cigarettes for early March 2021. So remember our year end is Feb 2021, all right? All right. So that, um, that income received in advance, all right, is going to form, is going to be part of the our deferred tax calculation because it's an it's an it's an item on our statement of financial position for which the amount for which the carrying amount differs with the tax base. In other words, when we receive the amount, right, we say we're going to recognize it as income in the following financial year, right? But SARS says earlier of receipt or accrual. So it's going to accrue next year, but it has been received this year. So according to SARS, we have to pay tax on it now. So that's going to create a timing difference or a temporary difference, right? Right, so on 1 January 2021, this entity paid their quarterly rent for, of uh, amounting to 150000 for the period ending 31 March 2021. So this is a quarterly rent. Right. So if it is quarterly rent, remember that our year ends Feb 28. No, 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 not Feb 28. Right. Well, maybe, but Feb 2021 is what I want. So we already have two months, the month of January, the month of February, these four within our current year. Then the month of March is in the next financial year. So the actual Prepayment here is going to be a fifty thousand rand because this one hundred thousand is going to be part of the current year expenditure. So if you look here carefully, you see that the accountant says prepaid render and he says the whole one hundred and fifty thousand. But this was paid for three months, and two of those months are in the current financial year. So that is where you also need to adjust your your taxation your, your your profit before tax because there is an expense for the current year of hundred thousand which was not included in this profit before tax because the accountant uh considered the full amount as a prepayment so that's the adjustment when they say calculate correct profit before tax now you figure out that uh, this is an error that was made by an accountant we're not adjusting for tax here you can uh Assume you are still doing, so when they say calculate the correct profit before tax, just take yourself back to the previous years where you had nothing to do with taxation. Those adjustments are what they're looking for. Right, so we see one adjustment here where we have to deduct that. And remember that we're going to have this prepaid render of 50,000 on our statement of financial position. 
But according to the rules of SARS, because this is a prepayment, which is less than 100,000, you will remember those rules from your tax 2601. It's less than 100,000, and it's also payable within six months. It's going to be utilized within six months. So it's going to be deductible. We can deduct this. So you see that we have that 50,000 to be recognized as an expense in the following financial year. But according to SARS, we have to deduct it now. All right. So that's going to create a timing difference called a temporary difference. So we will need this when we calculating our um, our deferred tax, right? <clears throat> right. So that's was that for that. Then we go to the next one. So we are told that the deferred tax balance for February 2021 20, has not been calculated, right? And uh, the one for 2020 was calculated but was not adjusted for this information two and information three. So let's look at that information two and three, all right? To see if how they're going to affect the 2020 financial statements. All right, so what happened is that uh, these guys acquired machinery on 1 March 2017, which is very convenient for us because they acquired that right at the beginning of the year. So it's easy for us to count the months, right? Then on 20 February, uh, that is at the end of the year, then uh, this guy went to physically inspect the capacity. Then now when he physically inspected the capacity, he saw that the remaining useful life of the cigarette making machines are only two years as at 28 February. So he says, as we stand here on 20 February, we just have another 20 Feb 2022 and another 20 Feb 2023. So we have two years ahead standing on this date of 28 February. So this is something you refer to as a change in estimate. So if you're doing the year module, that's going to be your in your test too. All right. um, but it's a simple concept. We have it in front of us, so we're going to do it. But it's going to be part of the test too. Uh, not really the topic of change in estimate, but the change in estimate of depreciation, because we're going to be doing PPE. Right. Um, right. Um, so how do you deal with this? So if there is a change in... Uh, in the estimate of um, depreciation all right what you need to do is that we have two years from the end of the year right but for this current year we also need to include that um, change that change is applied from the current year we're not going to apply it from next year but we start this current year so because we have two years in advance we're going to include this one as well all right this current year we're, we're going to make a change all right so a change in estimate is going to be applied uh, prospectively, right? With, um, okay. And in this particular case for depreciation, it has to be from the beginning of the current year. So it's two plus one. There's those two from 20 February going forward, plus the adjustment we need to make for the current year. So that's going to be three years remaining. Right. And so what you need to do if there's a change in estimate, is to determine the carrying amount at the beginning of this current year. Right. So you need to determine the carrying amount at the beginning of this current year. So that's going to be very easy because we already have the amounts given to us. So the carrying amount is going to be uh, this, right? But that is the beginning of 2021. Both this is the carrying amount in 2020 which is the balance brought down into 2021. At the beginning of this year, this is the carrying amount, right? And uh, if you like mathematics, your carrying amount is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to what? To, uh, let me just do a quick calculation, 5,500, right? That's the cost less 2,684. So I get 2,816. I don't know if uh, my calculation is correct. The principle is correct. So I, this 2816 is the, at the beginning of this year. And remember, now we have three years to allocate this. Because it was two years from end of the year, but we also include this current year. 
So that's why we need the carrying amount at the beginning of this year. Then we spread that over three years, right? We divided by three. Um, uh, uh, lots of source, source, source. This is not complete. Maybe there is some, what is that called? Maybe some residual value there, which I might be forgetting. Um, all right, so it was to be changed um, from 20% to that. So I was forgetting this residual value here. So the residual value of these machines would change from 500,000 to 400,000, all right? So the residual value originally was 500,000, but now it's gonna be 400,000, correct? So remember that our carrying amount as I calculated that is 2816, right? Now we have to subtract this 400 so that we get the depreciable amount, not just the carrying amount, right? So we get uh, subtract the 400. Right, so that's going to be the new depreciation that we have to, to be using in that particular case. Um, all right, but if you look here, the depreciation that was recorded um, for the current year is the difference between those two accumulated depreciation figures. Because last year, the accumulated depreciation was 2684, all right, and now it's 3247200, all right. So the depreciation that was already calculated for this current year is going to be the difference between these two, right? Uh, these two amounts, the accumulated depreciation last year and the accumulated depreciation this current year, right? 3247, 200, less 2684, right? So which means that it was 563, 200. That was the depreciation that was calculated during this um, this current year using the old method before we adjust it. Now, if we do the adjustment, um, Then we have, if we do the adjustment, we'll see that the amount is going to be different. And then we have to make that adjustment, right? In the current financial uh, statements, all right? So that's also going to be an adjustment in the profit before tax. Because an, an accounting estimate, a change in estimate has to be applied this current year going forward. All right? So we have to also take into account that particular adjustment. All right, um, so where else do we go from here? Right, then we also have information number three where there is um, revenue, not, not revenue, but inventory that has to be changed. Uh, so this change in the inventory valuation, or there's a change in the inventory valuation. So that change in the inventory valuation, um, so we are changing from what? From, um, from the weighted average to the first in, first out. So this is a change in accounting policy. And um, if you're doing the semester module, then um, that's quite appropriate already. But if you're doing the year module, then those are some of the smaller topics that you will cover later on, but they are very simple to understand. So we're moving from this weighted average to first in, first out. So remember our year is 20 February, right? 2021. So our infantry using the weighted average originally was 278. Now, this is the closing inventory. All right. So our closing inventory, um, what happened? Was 278, now it's 301. So there is an increase in closing inventory by 23,000, right? So closing inventory, if you remember as well, closing inventory reduces cost of sales because you say opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory, you get your cost of sales. And so if you're, because we subtract closing inventory to get cost of sales, our closing inventory is going to reduce the cost of sales. So now our closing inventory is increased, which means that it's gonna reduce our cost of sales by 23,000. 
And if cost of sales is reduced, it means our profit is increased. So there's an increase in gross profit by 23,000. All right, because there is an increase in closing inventory. Then our opening inventory is from this year, All right? The closing inventory for February 2020 is going to be the, what is that called? The opening inventory for here. So our opening inventory was 235. Now it's 248. It's 13,000. And as you know, um, opening inventory increases cost of sales. So our cost of sales has increased by 13,000, which means um, if our cost of sales increases, then um, our gross profit falls. So the effect is a fall in gross profit by 13,000. So the net effect is an increase in gross profit by 10,000, right? After adjusting for both the opening inventory and the closing inventory, the net effect of the new policy is at 10,000. So we have to include this 10,000 in our in our calculation of the correct profit before tax because this change in accounting policy it has to be applied retrospectively like from the uh, previous years for which we're going to present financial statements right so there's going to be an increase in 10,000 for the current year right um, but because the SARS will not accept the new inventory valuation method they will not reopen prior period tax assessments. So, which means that according to SARS, the value of infantry on 20 February, 29 February 2020, right, is still 235 according to SARS. But according to us, it's now 248. So, you see that the difference here is going to be a temporary difference because we have different values for items in our statement of financial position. The value of inventory for us is 248, but SARS has refused to acknowledge to accept that. So they stick, they're going to stick with 235. So which means that we have to go back into the year 2020 and adjust our deferred tax, which we had already calculated. Because there's something that arose in 2021, which affects 2020. All right? Because a change in accounting policy is going to be applied retrospectively in the periods be uh, uh, um, periods be, uh, before this current period um, that is that are going to be disclosed in the statement of uh, in the financial statements right right so that's going to be an adjustment in your tax in your profit as well as on your deferred tax Right now, these are provisional tax payments. We need them when calculating the current tax due. All right, so these two, we need them for calculating the current tax due because um, the question requires the current tax due, not just current tax. So if the question requires current tax due, they, the question requires what's still outstanding, what's still owing to SARS. So which means we have to deduct what was actually paid. Right, and finally, um, there's a rate change from 29% last year to 28% this current year, right? Um, so that is what we have. So these, you have to be very careful here. There are, I think there are three issues that I have to highlight about this change in, 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 in the tax rate. So the first one is that um, when calculating 2020, right, 2020 uh, deferred tax, please remember to use 29% because that's the one rate applicable then, right? So that's one of the things you need to pay attention to because it's very easy to default. Uh, you start by calculating your deferred tax for 2021, you use 28%. Then you have to calculate for 2020, you, students normally default into using 28%. But they forget that uh, the rate was 29% in the other year. So that's one of the things you need to pay attention to. Then the other thing is, when there is a rate change and you have to disclose the income tax uh, expense not, right? then you need to include this rate change in the note. 
it's required it's a required narrative as a narrative as a simple statement there where you explain that uh, the income tax changed from uh, this last year to this this current year and the other thing you need to pay attention to is that uh, the effect on uh, taxation the effect of the change the effect of the rate change the rate change could lead to us paying more uh, to the rate change could lead to increasing income tax expense or decreasing all right so we have to pay attention to what was the effect of the change so we're going to discuss that as well in this particular discussion all right so basically this is what's uh going to that's at the basis of the construction of our answer which we've just discussed now uh now we go to the actual answering and application of what we have discussed All right, so we go to the to the first one that required us to calculate the adjusted profit. All right, so we just now have to demonstrate how we can do that. Um, Right, so we first of all were given this as the profit before tax, right? So this is a figure that was given. And remember that adjustment for prepaid rent where we said the for all the, the full 150,000 was wrongly considered a prepayment. Whereas it should only be one month because January and February are part of this. So it was a wrong calculation. So we have to deduct this as an expense. Right, and then there's a change in accounting estimate that depreciation, remember that. Uh, so we said that the original depreciation there uh, that had been calculated was this. Remember the accumulated depreciation for 2020 was this. This is for 2021. We said the difference between those two is the current year depreciation that was calculated. So what I'm going to do there just to, to demonstrate that again. So the difference between that is um so it's um three three two four seven what right, two hundred then we deduct two six eight four one two three so which means that our original depreciation was five six three two hundred but our new depreciation is based on the carrying amount last year. Right, minus the accum the what, what, what did I say? The carrying amount at the beginning of the year, which is obviously the carrying amount last year, right? So this was the cost. This was the accumulated depreciation 2020, right? So this gives us the carrying amount, but we also saw that we have a new residual value which we need to subtract. So if we do that, we have five five hundred, right? Uh, less two six eight four one. Right, one, two, three, less the residual value. Remember the residual value. So we have two, four, one, six. Then we divide that by the three years. Right. Remember how we got these three years. Right. So the new depreciation is going to be eight zero five three three three. So we've already recorded this. We need to record the difference. All right, which is remaining. So it's going to be eight zero five. Right, eight zero five three three three. Yeah, eight zero five triple three, right? Less five six three two hundred. So we have a two forty two one thirty three that has to be deducted further because there has been a change in our uh, estimate and it has to be applied from this year. And there was a change in our uh, inventory valuation, All right? So this was the net effect. Remember that this was we, we demonstrated this. All right. So this is going to be a corrected profit before tax. Please do not adjust for exempt differences yet. It's just those errors and adjustments that have to be done to financial statements before we even talk about calculating tax. So we don't have to adjust for exempt differences here. But please, please don't do that. When they say correct profit before tax, you just use the accounting adjustments. What went wrong? What did the accountant get wrong? Then once we get our correct profit before tax, 
this is going to be our starting point now for for calculating um, for calculating current tax but now it's not like we are correcting something that is wrong we are just converting from accounting profit to a taxable amount we want so we, because SARS is a lot of rules we're gonna follow those rules required by SARS right basically it's not really that it's, it was the figure was wrong no it's just we are applying the rules of SARS so please don't confuse those two because many students who here start adjusting for div, uh, what is that exempt uh, exempt differences your dividends your foreign income your traffic fines and so forth and uh, that shows a lot of confusion Right, then the next thing we're gonna do is now to calculate the deferred tax for 2021. So I'm going to follow the principle. So we have machinery, remember we have machinery, right? Right, uh, so for machinery we have our, um, what do we have? For machinery we have uh, the cost, right? And what we need to do is to, to to deduct the current year depreciation, right? Um, not the current year source. We need to determine the carrying amount of this um, particular, what's this thing? Particular machinery, okay. So remember that we already have the amounts, right? Okay, so what we have is, um, from the figures that are given, if you want to calculate, we have the cost as, Five five hundred, right? All right. So we have five five hundred, um, five five zero zero one two three. Then we subtract this odd depreciation. Remember it for last year. So two six eight four, right? One two three. Then we subtract um the current year depreciation. All right. We subtract the current year depreciation, which is the uh, we calculated that depreciation, right? Um, eight something something, if you remember that figure. That's 805. That's the new depreciation for the current year, which we must uh, deduct. So it's 805333, right? Uh, no, 8805. So I get, so the figure that I get here for the carrying amount is 2010667. So basically, it's your carrying amount, right? And then you have to determine your tax base. So it was 5,500,000. This is the cost of the machinery. And it was bought on 1 March 2017, right? And our year now is 28 February 2021, all right? So we need to, to, to check the rules of SARS to, for us to be able to determine the tax base, right? So we need to listen to the rules of SARS. How does SARS allow us the deductions there? So it's 20% per annum, which is not apportioned for parts of a year. So what we need to do now is to determine, um, all right, so it's 5,500. So the first year was 2018, all right. The second year was 2019. Then the third year was 2020. Then the what? The fourth year is 2021. So, they, so there was 20% deducted here, 20, 20, 20. So, we, so far we've deducted 80%. So which means that we are just left with 20% to deduct in the future. So multiplied by five, 500, all right, one, two, three. So we got a million and a hundred thousand, all right. So what we have done here is to determine the carrying amount and the tax base of an asset. And the difference between those two uh, is a temporary difference, all right. Now, this is a case where the carrying amount of an asset is greater than the tax base of the asset. So that leads you to a taxable temporary difference. And uh, I don't like to go into the details why it's taxable because I normally say to my students in my class, just follow the rules for a start, right? Eventually you, you will grasp uh, these things. Um, all right, so no as a rule, because this, these are four rules that are given, right? Uh, in your study guide, I think I, I used the study guide where it says, if the carrying amount of an asset is greater than the tax base of an asset, the difference leads to 
a taxable temporary difference which will lead to deferred tax liability. These are rules that you have to, so there are four rules that you have to write down and apply. Because the carrying amount of machinery is greater than tax base, this temporary difference is taxable. So your lecturers want you to show in this column whether it's taxable or deductible. So the choice here was taxable is outside brackets, deductible temporary difference is in brackets. So this difference between these two is taxable in the future. Right. Um, basically, what this means is that um, this represents future income. Right. But out of that future income, we're gonna get, we're gonna, we are going to be allowed a deduction of a million and hundred thousand. So for this difference, nine, nine, ten, six, six, seven, of income that we're gonna get, we won't be allowed any deduction. So we will pay tax on it. That's why it's taxable. Right. It means we will pay tax on it that extra amount, all right, because we're going to get revenue income, right, this is a generalization, cash flow of 2010667, $6, but of that, we're going to be allowed a million and a hundred thousand, so we can deduct, but then the rest, we can't deduct anything, so we can, ju we just have to pay tax, that's why it's taxable, all right, so that was just some, some quick explanation, which I don't like to do, Right, then uh, the lecturers also want you to indicate here in this column whether it's a deferred tax asset or liability. And yeah, you normally have to put your liability in brackets right, for the sake of consistency for you as a student. So, and they want you to indicate the tax rate that you apply. All right. So 20% of this is going to be a deferred tax liability. We come to infantry. Our new infantry figures 301, but SARS it's saying, no, we don't accept that. All right. So because SARS doesn't accept, this is going to be 278. Remember that, uh, those amounts that were given to us. We, 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 the original figure was 278, and then we decided to change, and it's now 301. So in our financial statements, we are allowed to change by this accounting standard. Um, I think that's ES10. A change, um, no, 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 it's eight. It's eight where there is a change in accounting policy. So we can recognize this 301,000 as a new value for infantry. But we are told that SARS has refused to accept that. So they will stick to 278. That is why we're going to have a temporary difference there. The, our asset is 301, and the tax base, according to SARS, is 278. The tax base is the value of the asset in the eyes of SARS. So in the eyes of SARS, what we have is 301,000 is actually 278 to them. So this is a same case as above where the carrying amount of an asset is greater than its tax base or the, its value in the eyes of SARS. So we have a taxable temporary difference of 23 for which we will pay 28% in the future, which is a deferred tax liability. We're not just gonna pay that tax now, but in the future, we're going to pay that tax, all right? Then revenue received in advance, this is a liability, right? And uh, according to SARS, you have paid tax on it already. So there isn't any future tax consequences uh, on, that, on that revenue. You have already paid tax. Because remember, according to SARS, you pay earlier of receipt or accrual. And you, since you have already received, you pay the tax already. So according to SARS, SARS is done with this 63,000, but we still have it as received in advance. So it's a liability whose value is greater than a, uh, the carrying amount of a liability, value is greater than what? The tax base. So it leads to a deductible temporary difference. So these are the rules that you need to remember, those four rules. And uh, a deductible temporary difference leads to a deferred tax asset. In other words, when we recognize this as 63,000 in the financial statements, we're not going to be paying any tax. So we won't be paying tax on this amount. And so it's a saving of 17,640 in the future. That's a deferred tax asset. Right. Then the prepaid render is 50,000. It's an asset, but they, we've been charged. No, it's, we've been allowed to deduct that already by SARS. So and that's an asset whose carrying amount is greater than the tax base. All right. Um, that's going to be taxable. 
that's gonna lead to a um, deferred tax liability right then eventually what you need to do is to add up so you can add up your taxable temporary differences so you have your this plus that minus that plus this it's gonna give you this right then at 20 percent of this should give you that then you can check this amount here you get by saying this figure times 20 percent then you compare it with against the additions in here the summation here to see if it will gonna give you the same amount so as a way of a reconciliation because sometimes you do make a mistake so if you say 20 percent of this figure it should give you this amount right if it doesn't um it should give you this amount and if you add up these deferred taxes they should also give you that amount so if there is a difference then it means that there was an error somewhere all right so let's go to the previous deferred tax um so we are told of the deferred tax right uh yeah we are given it's given here so the deferred tax liability last year was 249,400. Right. So what that means is that 29%, um, we said 29% of some taxable temporary difference, and we got this 249,400. Remember 29% because it's last year. All right. So basically, the, then the taxable temporary difference for last year, the taxable temporary difference for last year is 249,400 over 29 percent all right so you can uh, you can make sense of that right so it's 249 249 400 then we divide by 29 percent so we have it as 860,000 and we know we need to remember now that um, we also have an adjustment because we have to adjust our accounts previously uh, this infant our infant value was 235 all right last year and SARS also agreed is 235 but this year we have changed and we want to go back and SARS doesn't want to go back so SARS will still have 235 for last year but we have to restate our inventory as 248 so which means that our deferred tax now is also changed as well for last year because some amounts now have deferred with SARS because we have a change in accounting policy um sorry i don't see this 178640 did i do this correctly let me revisit the my my my, my deferred tax so it's 249400 and i go to 14 because i shouldn't get the, uh, an amount that is different all right where is 14 here 1314 all right um All right, so I think there might be an error. Let me check quickly the original question because I might have made an error in copying or something. So I have the original question with me. Otherwise, that's just nothing but a typo, all right? All right, so I... Um, That's not what I have. So what I'm going to do here is to demonstrate the principle. So the correct principle here, based on this amount, apologies, there must probably a typo. So we have 249,400, which is a deferred tax liability. Uh, I don't think I'm making any mistake there. So that's 249,400. And uh, like 249,400 divided by 29%, like I demonstrated. Um, then I get 860,000. So I don't know how come I have a different amount here. So you will pay attention to, um, to all right, so I would, I would have this as 860,000, and then this being 249,400. All right, so this is what we would have done, but because the memo is a different answer, we're just going to assume that um, it's 616. The assumption is done so that we keep consistency in uh, the demonstration of principle. Because if I start using 860 now, then I have to recalculate every other amount. All right. So let's assume 
that it was actually 178,640. And uh, using that 178,640, um, we divide that by 29%. It gives us six sixteen. All right. So there is some error. I don't know who's what what happened there with the typing and stuff. And then we have to say, okay, this was the what it was last year before any change. But now after inventory has been denied, we have an additional change. So we have um, two forty eight and SARS has two thirty five, leading to an taxable temporary difference because the carrying amount of an asset is greater than the tax base all right. so the new uh balance is going to be equal to 629 all right and uh so now the new deferred tax liability by the way the examiners want you to de uh, um, to write here whether it's a deferred tax asset or liability so you have to write that it's a this is a deferred tax liability right so it's um let me write it down it's a 257 257 right 787 all right so for last year the liability was 182 for 10 all right so we're gonna use this figure and the for current year is 257 all right 787 so as you can see there has been an increase in what in a liability so if there's an increase in a liability what it means is that we basically we're not paying so this is a tax liability so it means that we there's some tax that we didn't pay which led to an increase in the liability all right so if there is an increase in the deferred tax liability from one year to the other if there's an increase in deferred tax liability then the difference is taxable all right in other words it uh, leads to a deferred tax liability all right um if there's a difference, if there's a decrease in the deferred tax liability from last year to this year, then the different that movement is going to be deductible. All right. Um, so if it was an asset last year and it has increased from uh, last year to this year and it was a deferred tax asset, then the movement is deductible. Right. Um, and if it was a deferred tax asset and it decreased, then uh, the movement is taxable. So these are things that you need to know and practice. I'm not going to focus on this now with you because um, we don't have sufficient time. Perhaps another time we can get sufficient time. So if a movement in temporary differences is taxable, right, it means you have to deduct. You, you, we, if it is taxable, it means we will pay tax in the future. That's why we have deferred tax liability. We are liable for paying tax, but only in the future. So which means currently we won't be paying tax on that amount right? because it's deferred tax liability. So if a movement in temporary differences is taxable, when calculating current tax, remember currently we are not paying that tax. So that movement has to be deducted in the calculation of current tax, right? Because it's deferred tax liability. We're going to pay tax in the future. It's taxable in the future, not currently. So when we are dealing with figures and we want to determine current tax, we need to remove this movement because for that movement, we're going to pay tax in the future. But if it is deductible, it means it's deductible in the future. We have to pay now. So we have to add anything that is deductible. All right. In the calculation of current tax, we add the movement in temporary differences if it is deductible we deduct the temporary movement in temporary differences if it is taxable right so it things that you need to write down in your notes and then uh, practice it over time first of all get it fixed in your head as a rule then eventually make sense of it as you go but you need to know the rules in the first place <clears throat> right um so that was the explanation of how do we know whether something is um <clears throat> deductible or taxable. So the movement in temporary differences is this 629. So that's 6629 from last year, all right? Then it went all the way from 629 to what? This current year to 920. Um, this is the 920 we're talking about. Or right, this is the 920. So it's 920 
double six seven. So the total movement is um, 291667. And this is taxable because it has led to an increase in deferred tax. So in other words, when we calculate current tax, we need to remove this figure of 291667 because tax on that has to be paid in the future. That's why it's a taxable temporary difference, taxable in the future, leading to a deferred tax liability. All right. Uh, if you don't understand, it's uh, possible, you have to write down. Now, when it comes to the calculation of current tax expense, remember that adjusted profit is our starting point. Then we deal with our exempt differences. The foreign income, remember it, we have to deduct it because we are now calculating the current tax expense due. So we need to know how much to pay SARS. So SARS has their own rules. So they say, okay, starting on your profit, what did you include in your profit? And we tell them we included foreign income and they say remove foreign income because we have double tax agreements with that country. So you won't pay tax on that amount. So remove that amount, we don't want it. So foreign income is gonna be removed because SARS requires. Then now we tell SARS we included dividends. And they say no, but dividends, we don't pay income tax on dividends. So remove those dividends. So we remove them and we tell us that we also deducted traffic fines and they tell us that no but you can't deduct traffic fines because they were not incurred in the production of income they're not deductible so please add them back so we are following the rules of SARS. we add them back so the net effect on the temporary differences exempt rather exempt differences is a 616768 now we have profit after exempt differences and now we have movement in temporary differences. Remember, it's taxable. We calculated this just now. And we said this figure here, this figure, this is, which you see, this 291667, is included in this amount. But SARS wants us to pay tax on this amount in the future. That's why it gives rise to deferred tax liability. So we say, okay, so because SARS wants us to pay this, this amount, tax on this amount in the future, let us remove it because we are interested in the tax now, the current tax this year. So if this is for the future, so the taxable income uh, is 901,150. Now we're gonna pay 28% on that amount. So your lecturers want you to demonstrate this calculation here. So you have to say current tax expense at this amount, then you show the figure on which the 20% is applying to. So it applies to this amount. So this is your current tax, but the question required current tax due. All right. So we've already paid some provisional tax. Then what is due is this amount. Right. So quickly before we go uh, further, let's uh, let me do what? What do I want to do? I want to I want to demonstrate to you something quickly the effect of a rate change while we are still there. So um, yesterday or last year, we calculated 29% on what? 629, all right? And that's how we got 182.410. So in other words, standing in the year 2020, right? We were supposed to pay we could say in 2020, in the future, we are supposed to pay tax of 182.410. That's why it's deferred tax. But now the rules have changed. In 2021, the rate is now 28%. So we apply that 28% back to the original figure of 629, all right? To see, okay, now because this future tax is going to be taxed at 28%. So how much are we going to pay now because the tax rate has changed? So we say 28% times 6, 2, 9, 1, 2, 3. And we see that we only have to pay 1, 6, 7, 1, 2, 0. So we stand to gain, right? Our tax bill is going to be reduced because of this change rate in this rate change. Because we were going to pay 182 for 10 using 29%. But on the same figure, if we use 20%, we pay 1, 6, 7, 1, 20. So the tax benefit arising from the rate change is 182410 less 176 
right? 120. So there's a six, uh, my apologies there. There's a 6290. Now this 6290 is a decrease in the income tax expense. It's called, uh, the, so this is the effect of a rate change. So how does it affect income tax? By reducing that. So you need to remember it's going to reduce their tax liability. It's a gain. Right? Um, brilliant. Now remember that we have paid tax of um, how much? How much tax did we pay? All right, so this is the, the uh, what am I doing? This is the current tax that we calculated, right? You remember that figure? 252.322. So when we disclose this, all right, then if there was an over or under provision there, we would put it here. But now for deferred tax expense, this is what we do. We're saying, okay, what was the effect of the change in tax rate? This is a, a shortcut to what we did. So the effect was to reduce tax by 6290. In fact, that effect is affecting deferred tax, right? Because it's a, the effect on deferred tax. So the change in rate, in tax rate, affected our deferred tax. It reduced it by 6290. But then we have temporary differences. So what we're saying is that SARS says we must pay this. But there's an amount of this which we didn't pay but applies to this current year. So this is 28% of the movement in temporary differences. We are saying here it's an expense for the current year, although we didn't pay. Remember in accounting, we don't just record the amounts that we pay, we also record what we actually owe. So we owe the we saw what happens that we owed this amount of 252 and 81. Right. But such say pay us this now, and the other you pay later. So this is what was only paid. It's not the full expense. There is another portion which was unpaid, which is deferred, but it's still a tax expense. All right. So we combine that together to give us the income tax expense. Also including the foreign tax which is given. So this is the total um, which you we will put in under your your income tax expense, right? So you have profit before tax, then your income tax expense. This is going to be this amount here, right? Then from there, we go on to the tax rate reconciliation. We start with our accounting profit, all right? And we explaining to the users of financial statements, how did we end up paying for skisting? Or recognizing an expense of 464.49 when we should have recognized 506.684. In other words, from common sense of tax at the standard rate should have been 28% of this. Then we're saying, oh no, but there were some items that we adjusted. So this is foreign income. We were supposed to pay 28%, but we only paid this. So there's a gain there. Dividends, we didn't pay any tax. So there's a gain there. There's a reduction in tax. Traffic fines, we paid tax, so that is an expense. And the adjustment to the tax rate benefited us. So we benefited from um, foreign tax because they, we paid less. If we had paid 20%, we would have paid an additional 15,930. So that additional 15,930 is used to reduce what we, the, is used to reduce the total expense because we didn't pay the 15,930. So it's a gain. Uh, that's why our tax was reduced. And the dividends were also not paid tax on, so it's a gain. But the traffic fines we were made to pay, so it's a loss. And the change in tax rate gave us a gain. So eventually we had to pay this as the tax, right? So I'm going to post this in, um, on YouTube. So some of you might not be in, in, our, in our Telegram groups where you can get that. So if you're not, you can just WhatsApp this um, number and say, hey, you would like to join this class or this group, right? Not a class, this group to get the YouTube link. All right, and then we're gonna give you and you're gonna practice over and over. Right, and I know that you guys have uh, your assessment that is for, for those that are doing the, the semester module. That is just um, due, I think the 5th of April. So if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask. 
you can join our group here then we'll guide you through all right so for now we're going to stop here and we have to thank you very much for joining us and we wish you a wonderful evening each and every one of you uh now we're going to take questions from those that had been asking but this is not going to be recorded right so if whoever wants to go can go whoever wants to stay and ask and listen can actually do that so thank you very much and good evening